Welcome back, YouTubians. Gary with VW Jawbreaker. Today, we're doing some more work on that hot 1915. Let's get over here and get ready to start setting some deck height and figuring out compression ratio. Yay! <laughs> All right, we got all of our head studs on. They're all in there. Got our oil pump in. Still need to, yep, still got that side. In play, all that jazz. So, there we go. Got our 94s here. We got our deck type, deck type tool set, 95 times fast. So what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna go ahead and oil the cylinder. That way we won't scratch anything. Um, go ahead and I'm really dying to figure out the compression ratio of this thing. So I'm gonna get shims ordered or whatever else I need to do. So we're just gonna oil it for now, make sure it slides well. And then before we do the final assembly, we'll take the piston out clean the cylinder real well with brake clean, re-oil it. We're also going to go ahead and take the rings off, check our ring gap. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so we got everything up top dead center. We've lubed the pin, lubed the cylinder. Again, we're just doing a dry mock-up. We need to see exactly what our compression ratio is, so we need to measure deck height. Get that slid in. Come on. Where's it at? Oh, my finger's through the other side. Hold on. There we go. Or not. There it goes. All right. So again, only doing mock-up. We're not going to worry about putting the pins in and all that stuff. All right. Now we want to make sure it is all the way up you got to hold your cylinder so right there is all the way up it would not be a bad idea to go ahead and put your flywheel lock tool on it but hey we don't have a flywheel on there so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and you got the right size here we'll go ahead and run these down That way we're going to hold the deck height tool in place. That's good. Should be good. Go ahead and verify that it's top dead center, which it is right there. Now you can do one of two things. Use feeler gauges. Use a micrometer. My micrometer battery just died, so I have this feeler gauge just set up for uh, 50 thousandths. That's what I'm hoping for. Oh, we're loose. So we need to add some more. Let's add a 10 in there and make it 60 thousandths. Yep. Need to add some more. Let's jump up to 70 thousandths. If I can get them to unstick. Gotta love this stuff. Let's put the 10 away and the 20. So that's 70 thousandths. Let's see where we're at there. Ooh, nice and tight. So we actually have 70 thousandths deck height. That was a little more than I was hoping for. All right, so let's do our calculation real quick. We have 0.70 thousandths of deck height, so that's our deck. Our combustion chamber is 48 cc's on the heads, okay? The cam calls for 9.0 to 1 to 9.5 to 1. Somebody had mentioned, hey, dude, why don't you go ahead and run like eight and a half to one so to run just a ever so smidge cooler? Well, if you do this calculation, we're at 8.9 to one. I'm ecstatic. 
We don't need any shims. We don't need anything. We can go ahead and start assembling because this is perfect. All right, guys, well, here's where we're at. Uh, I found out the hard way that when you go to lap in the valves and set your ring gap, make sure the uh, camera's recording. So that's already done. Welcome back to, uh, yeah, let's just move on. How about that? So again, everything's lapped in, everything's uh, set, everything's good. So we'll go ahead and push that in. And I do have my arrow on my piston pointing towards the flywheel. On your clips, there's usually a rough side, a smooth side. Put the rough side in. I've got a couple different pair of pliers, so find out what works best for you. I already verified the other side's in there. I just like to give her a little tappy tappy, make sure it's all the way in. I don't really know why I enunciated on it all so much, but just go with it, guys. Hold your finger, slide it in. You'll feel it slip, click into place, and then rotate it a little bit. Make sure it's all the way in. Then once again, even though I know it's all the way in, I like to give her a little tapper. Just to ensure. All right. Now we'll go ahead and spin her on over. Get the other rod up. Holy cow, I should pull the plugs out of the other side. That's some killer compression. Wow. I can barely get this thing moved. All right, put that on the to-do list. Now, same thing. Let's go ahead and show you. Can you see? Always mark them top. This is cylinder three. If you look down in there, the arrow's pointing to the back because this is the middle. So now we'll do the same thing on this one. Slide her on over. And this is why you put your wrist pin in on the inside already. So good luck getting to that. Come on. There it goes. Give me a little wiggle. It's all the way seated. Again, favorite pliers, rough side in. All right, that feels good. That feels real good. I like it. Give it a little spin, make sure it spins nice. It's all the way in the groove. All right. There we go, jugs and pistons are on. Now, since I had to order a few things from CB Performance, I went ahead and ordered their windage tubes, which if you look, standard end, that end's longer. Makes it for putting in the case and sticking in place so much easier. They stand up on their own. Always make sure you put the seam side up. And if you have a leak, it leaks up. Okay, it makes it harder to get out. Whatever. All right, now we're going to take our head. I'm going to go ahead and put this bad boy on. I like to try to look through the hole so I don't try jabbing, jabbing stuff. Like push rod tubes out of the way. Somebody's in the house yelling. It makes me a little more glad I'm out here. All right, slowly, easily get them into place. 
you mangle them up a little bit, don't worry about it. Easy fix. Take your socket. And kind of just rotate them in. You can also fix up a little ding or something that you might have got. There you go, centers them up real nice. Uh, you like to use a little bit of sealant on the inside studs. Sorry, inside washers. A little bit of sealant right there. Just to help, hopefully, prevent a uh, future leak. That's pretty much the gist of it, guys. Other than that, just got to go ahead and uh, do a snug up of all of the studs. And then there's the first pass sequence to uh, tighten it up. And then there's a second pass. They both have different torque settings. And depending on what stud you have depends on the torque settings. Recommend getting yourself a Bentley book and looking up the torque settings for your application. It makes a big difference. Let's go ahead and get all the nuts on, the outside washers and nuts on, and then we'll snug them up, make sure we're pulling down even, then we'll do a preliminary torque, and then our final torque, and then the long block will be done. Not going to bore you with this crap, guys. We'll catch in a little bit. Well, there we go. That is one long block assembled. Hot 1915. Why do I keep saying hot? Do you not remember the size of those intake manifolds? Matched with a FK8 cam, 1.4 to 1 ratio rockers, big beef intakes, and uh, 44 Weber IDFs. At 8.9 to 1 compression ratio, this thing's gonna haul the mail. Let me tell you. Speaking of let me tell you, uh, I kind of forgot, but I did correct it. I did put in my tins. See, I'm running the cool tins. I like those better than just regular air deflectors. So that is set. So next time I see you, we'll be working on some. Rocker geometry, setting the in play, tins, and all that fun stuff. So we'll catch you again soon, guys. Till the next time, you know what to do. Be good.